Bloodlance is one of the worst core skills in Diablo 4 and the lowest ranked build for Necromancers. Now, I didn't know that. Since the game's release, I've been trying to stay away from reviews, uh, streams, especially the D4 subreddit. I just checked that out. Wow, what a dumpster fire. Staying away from that stuff is pretty much the only way I can enjoy highly anticipated games nowadays. But since it's been a month since release, the dust has settled. I figured I would check in on some of the builds, check on some of the tier lists, only to find out I'm playing one of the worst builds. Yep, anyone who's good at this game says I'm bad at the game. So uh, here it is, a uh, guide for the worst Necromancer build in Diablo 4. Now, I've always loved Blood Mage themes, but I've been playing Bloodlance since uh, around level 10 to 12-ish. I wanted to play Bone Spear because I played Bone Spear. Bone Spear Necro in D2 and D3 were some of my favorite builds. That's not Bone Spear. Here's Bone Spear. But you can't really off screen things as much as I would like. It kind of shoots back to you and then whatever. Blood Lance seemed kind of cool. I guess it sucks. In order to play the worst Necro build, we need to know how to Blood Lance does damage, right? How does Blood Lance do damage really? In order to uh, follow along here, we need to pull out paint. So I'll be square over here. Um, cool, cool, cool. That's the representation there. And then this will be some critters. Um, and then a big uh, monster is, that's an elite. Okay, makes sense. Cool. When you throw a blood lance, it lingers in the enemy. It kind of pierces their heart. You can see it sit through them and it does that for three seconds. And then when you hit other cr creatures, that damage triggers again. It happens on the initial hit and then it happens on subsequent triggers of it. Um, the first modifier here, enhanced blood lance, pierces through enemies who are currently lanced, dealing 50% re reduced damage to subsequent enemies after the first. So anything that's pierced, going to do less damage, but pierce through them and then hopefully spread. And then I'm using Supernatural Blood Lance after casting Blood Lance six times, your next cast is guaranteed to overpower. And I, I will go over the reason why I am uh, using this as opposed to the Paranormal, which is better in um, lots of ways. Overpower damage is bad, right? It doesn't do any damage, but, but with one of the legendaries I'm running, whenever your blood skills overpower, you gain 75% attack speed for four seconds. Four seconds of attack speed. So I have four seconds of crazy attack speed, 75%. When you think about that mixed with supernatural, after casting blood lance six times, I get a guaranteed overpower, right? So then that triggers the 75% attack speed. And then I'm going, that's the theory. Well, it's not theory. I, I know this is how it works. Um, there are some other things. But anyways, that is one of the key legendaries for doing damage. It's attack speed. Um, I also want to try it on a two hander, but I haven't found a good two hander with decent eye level or item power. Sorry. The other way we're doing damage is this imprint here. Bloodlands deals X percent 15 to 25 increased damage to its primary target per Lance enemy. This is going to be how you're going to kill bosses. So, right. So if my blood Lance does to say 10,000 damage. My blood lance does 10K damage, right? It's gonna shoot in, go boom, hit our main target, our elite creature or boss that we wanna bring down. Oh my gosh, 10,000 damage, that's crazy. And then it's gonna hit this guy, it's gonna trigger another 10K damage on our main target. Obviously this can crit and vulnerable and everything. We're doing hyper attack speed, and then we hit this guy over here, but with our enchant doing 25% more damage, but this is not 10k anymore. This is 12.5, right? Boom. And then if we hit this target and this target, because our attack speed is so crazy, all of these guys are taking damage, but then our main target is taking 10 for the first, 12.5 for the second, and then I don't know how the math works. I would assume the math doesn't isn't multiplicative, so we're just kind of going to add two and a half for each so let's just assume the worst because so then we're gonna get 15k 17.5 and then 20k so we only hit the main target once and boom 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 we do this much damage that's crazy amount of damage okay insane amounts of damage there's not any other build that would make this easier this is the best okay now think about this what if we have a line or a bunch, so to speak, and we lance our first target for 10K, then we hit them again, except it pierces, except that second, that pierce is going to do a little less damage. 15% reduced damage is 8.5, but it's going to go 8.5, and then it lances this target for full, this one gets hit full. And then when it hits this target, though, it does our 12 again. Are you following? So that's two casts, boom, and then double smack. And then we do it again, boom, and then it hits him, eight, eight and a half. And then it's going to hit this guy, eight and a half to the main guy or eight and a half to him but then it's going to hit him and then the eight and a half is going to be uh reduced and then we do another damage to this one which is like 
Uh, wait, 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 wait. No, no, no. Subsequent after the first means, and then we hit him again. So he's going to get lanced, but it pierces. And this guy takes the 8.5, but this, our main target is taking 10 K again. Cause he got hit again. But then when this guy gets hit, it's going to trigger damage on this guy, which is that 12.5. So two casts were doing this much damage. Crazy, right? But then we pierce again. Boom. On the third cast, it's piercing him. It's piercing him. It's, it's hitting him for 10. It pierces him, hits this guy, he, and then that triggers damage on the main guy again, which is going to be more now. It's going to pierce, but it's going to do the 10, but it's not going to do 10, right? No, 10 bad. It's going to do 12, 15k now, because three people are Lance. We're doing that extra damage. And then when it pierces, it hits this guy. It's going to trigger again. It's going to go 15k again, and then it's going to hit this guy again, 15k again. Three casts. Look at this crazy damage. And when you're doing 75% increased attack speed, you go, but then guys, you're not even taking into account the other thing here. We have this, which this is what I want to put on a two-hander to try out. When Bloodlands hits an enemy that's already Lance, has a up to 20% chance to fire a Bloodlands at a nearby enemy. So we take into all this solid, sound, precise mathematics. On one, we get a lucky proc. Boom, it lances to this guy, which is triggering another... 17.5k but then it's also piercing and doing another one 17 plus this guy 17 plus it pierces him again it hits this guy for a new lance boom doing damage to the original for another 17,000. this is three casts sure bone spear can hit uh for 300k in one cast but guys this is the worst build for necromancers okay that's how blood lance does damage okay so for quick talents look Obviously stacking blood lance, obviously doing hemorrhage for no particular reason to be honest. I'm just gonna go over a couple things. Obviously, I think the talents are pretty self-explanatory in this game. If there's one thing I've noticed um, in Diablo 4, there's not much choice here. You pick what you want to do, and then you pick the things that make it better. And those things are usually the things that make every build better. So figure it out. Get vulnerable, do damage, and stay alive. Stay alive is also the thing. Uh blood mist one point. That's all you're gonna need. Uh, some notable things I'm going to point out talent wise, just in case you do want to play this bad build, you find an amulet that has these bonuses to passives Imperfectly balanced is a good one. Um, but a better one I would say is coalesce blood. The only perk of being a blood mancer is you're going to get, you're going to get blood orbs a lot. You're going to be fortifying yourself. You're going to be healthy. A lot of the times healthy characters, it just means you're over 80% life, 24% more damage all the time. Hopefully. Oh, this inspiring leader is decent because. When you're healthy, you gain more attack speed. More attack speed means more blood lances, means more overpower procs because of our paranormal blood lance, right? Is that the right one? Supernatural, sorry. What's the difference? Oh, also sacrifice all your minions. You're a true necromancer. This is Diablo 4. We sacrifice everything. We forget they exist, okay? Here's what I did. That's basically the talents. I also have bone spirit. Um, I would say not necessary. It's gonna transfer into our unique portion of it. Uh, I am rocking the Blood Artisan's Curus. Curus? Since I'm spawning so many Blood Orbs as a Blood Mancer, I, I grab this because I didn't really have anywhere else for my talents to go. I'm picking up Blood Orbs and spawning Bone Spirits, which is kind of nice because Blood Lance does do physical damage. So if I do physical damage boost, Bone Spirits also physical damage. So it's just kind of a bonus there. I, I'm look to be honest, it's not that good of idea. It's not that great. It pro it's probably much more effective to just have the four stats here be, you know, some damage reduction, blood orb healing is trash, 4% armor, kind of good, but whatever. Damage after picking up a blood orb is fine, but that's like one paragon node basically, or half a paragon node. It might be better off to have something like this where you're just doing uh, blood skill damage and damage reduction. That's probably a better option if you're going full blood. Look, the free bone spirits are kind of fun and then also helps with essence generation here. I honestly just wanted to use a unique because um, the only other unique I could find that would work with this build is that is the ring of the, of the stars and uh, the star, star caller or some shit, starless skies. I think that might be it. That's in that uber unique realm with Shaco and stuff and only like one person in Korea and one in China or the people who got on and got lucky for a Helltide. So nobody has these things, so don't expect it. But if you do get a Ring of the Starless Skies, this is gonna be, that's gonna be amazing for this. I just don't count on it. Uh, Quick on Paragon. Look, I'll be honest, get Exploit Glyph. What else? Oh, damage while fortified. This is kind of nice. Um, You're gonna be fortified a lot just with the being a Bloodmancer and, and uh, generating that so this one sucks i just figured i would try overpower because i'm using overpower but overpower does suck i do want to say that this essence on kill node from the bone graft tree is amazing get in here and grab one two three four essence on kill if you do enough damage you're going to be 
cruising with essence otherwise i'll be honest i don't really know much i'm not that good at uh this this area what i'm doing here isn't the best someone could probably tell me the first board i guess that is probably the most important i'm using the blood begets blood we're generating a lot of blood orbs we're grabbing them we're getting more damage but yeah i am also only level 78 so i don't have the whole paragon board unlocked so I haven't fully delved into that yet. I've just been trying to get the major nodes and getting these glyph sockets in. Whatever the uniques, um, we're not using any. This one is an optional one, and it's probably not even good to use. The other ones are no good. Bloodlands has no uniques that make it better. Red flag? I don't know. Make a better game, Blizzard. Don't get mad at me. Let's just get on in, and you guys can see it in action. But in level 78, I'm going to be doing, what is this, level 80 nightmare dungeon so above my level hopefully my commentary will add something it might uh make it worse but it's a gamble we gotta take in life guys oh that's get in the dungeon don't walk away from the dungeon tip number one if you guys want to actually play this build uh the first thing you want to do is get a sick transmog because necro transmogs are great and that's going to be the best part of this build is looking good while doing it that's half the battle nowadays look good while doing it we're using tendrils wrap everything up i'm using the physical uh corpse explosion because i like to be able to see my screen so as you can see when i get a nice proc from that when i get a nice proc from the splitting oh there's the bone spirit It actually does a lot of damage. The play style like, of it I, that I do like, I'll, and genuinely, is hitting like the main target. So I like, hit this guy, and then doing damage to that guy, and it kills the main guy. That's kind of fun. Ah, uh, look, it's not that great, right? Ugh. Oh, I looked up a build. It's on the F tier. Oh, now I can't play it. Uh, how bad is it really? Is it slow? Yeah, probably. Is it worse and inefficient? Yeah, most likely. But this is what it looks like to be the worst build, and it. It's not that bad. If you can't figure it out, playing a good build, <laughs> I'll be honest. What are you doing? Maybe this game's not that hard, guys. I think you guys really need to take in the the attack speed that I get out of this too. Watch this. Here it comes. Chop, 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 chop. And I'm out of then. Then you get out of essence, right? All right. Three, three elites, no problem. I think attack speed stacking builds are always the most fun in ARPGs. Uh, my build in gear is, I would say, subpar to medium par, maybe medium rare par. And, like, I'm not doing anything crazy. I'm just, uh, get the essence back. Spam, 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 spam. I like builds with range. And what is fun is with all the blood orbs, look at these bone spirits. Just cranking out bone spirits. Boom. One thing I do hate about the the necromancer in general is he's left-handed. Unless most of his power is actually coming out of the right hand. Actually, I didn't know that. Maybe the sword is for, for show. Nope, I'm left-handed. Yeah, so that's a downside, to be honest. So here's a big, big juice. Watch. Tendrils. There we go. Everything starts ricocheting. Looking good. You can see the blood. Uh, when Bloodlands does damage to targets, it does like this cool little, like, sh I don't know, like, blood thing that, like, sinks them all up into this weird. Here, let me see if I can show you. Yeah, see, like, the little. The little blood link between them, all the ones that you're doing damage to. I think it's sick. Thematically, effect. It's very cool. Effectiveness, very low. But if you never play a good build, you'll never know what a good build feels like. And then you can live in this happy little space where, oh, look, this is just the game. Everyone plays at this pace. All right, downside here. First one to show is this Waller bullshit. Not great. Also frozen. I don't have to say how bad that is, right? We all know this. We all know this, right? Yes, we all know this. So you can see the kind of exponential, maybe you could, couldn't really see it there, I'll have to zoom in and post. The exponential like damage that uh, things take if you can hit multiple, extra percentage kind of going and hitting multiple things all at once. If there's a unique or something that kind of 
I don't know, shoot three blood lances or something. It's, it's going to go crazy. All right, let's see if I can get good display here. What's cool is you hit the main target. Not to show on the boss. But if you hit the main target and then just smack the other guys. Watch, watch, watch. Okay, so. Boom. Extra damage. That's what that was. But yeah, that is the worst Necro build in the game. If, uh, if you guys found this video entertaining or helpful and you also want to play a terrible build uh subscribe because uh i want to play a minion build and i guess that's all that's also bad so i guess i'll only play bad builds my name's squid legs see you guys in the next video as always love you